Um, so my name is Megan Henderson, and I would like uh, just to acknowledge that I am joining you today from the unceded territories of the Wasanich and the First Nations and the Hulk and Medium Treaty Group in Shawnigan Lake, British Columbia. Um, I just completed my practicum with the Public Health Agency of Canada as a student public health officer, and I was supporting Manitoba Health in their COVID response, among a couple other things. Um, in this role, I supported a newly formed managed alcohol program in a First Nation in Northern Manitoba. And throughout this discussion, I'll go over what a managed alcohol program is um, and discuss a rapid review that I performed on indigenous focused maps in Canada. So MAP is short for managed alcohol program. Um, and if you're anything like me a couple of months ago, you won't have any idea what a managed alcohol program is. And I just encourage you to listen with um, an open mind. Hmm, my thing's not letting me progress. There we go. Um, so before going any further, I need to define a couple of terms. So starting with alcohol use disorder or AUD. AUD is defined as a chronic and relapsing brain disorder characterized by an impaired ability to stop or control alcohol use despite adverse social, occupational, or health consequences. So people who access MAPS live with severe alcohol use disorder. The next concept is non-beverage alcohol or NBA. And within the homeless population living with severe alcohol use disorder, drinking non-beverage alcohol or NBA, such as rubbing alcohol, hand sanitizer and hairspray is prevalent due to its easy access, higher alcohol content and lower cost than beverage alcohol. Regular long-term ingestion of NBA is linked to severe health effects like liver cirrhosis, pancreatitis, cancers, nausea, vomiting, central nervous system depression, vision problems, coma, seizure, and even death. So what is a map? So now that we've defined those key concepts, we can move into what a map is. So managed alcohol programs are a relatively new phenomenon. They were first implemented in Canada in the 1990s in response to the freezing deaths of three men in Toronto who couldn't access shelter because of their drinking. Um, since that time, maps have been popping up all over the country, uh, many under the radar, as a compassionate response to people with severe and chronic alcohol use disorder. So maps are a controlled amount of alcohol, usually in the form of beer or wine, in a scheduled manner to a specific population at high risk of alcohol-related harms. Most maps have strict eligibility, eligibility criteria, which vary from program to program. Participants are usually houseless or precariously housed, consume NBA, have or could have an alcohol use disorder diagnosis, and have previously failed at abstinence-based treatments. So the goals of a MAP. So as with other harm reduction programming, the goal of a MAP is to support people where they're at and reduce the risk of harm associated with you know, whatever the problem is, so injection drug use, but in this case, alcohol use disorder. Um, the purpose of a MAP is to supply people with enough alcohol to avoid withdrawal while decreasing the harms of excessive alcohol intake, binging, and NBA consumption. The program's goal is not to induce intoxication, but provide a steady amount of quality alcohol that allows the participants to focus their time on socio-normal activities and self-betterment rather than where they're going to find their next drink. So the benefits of MAPS are well documented in the available literature, which is very limited. Um, they are shown to reduce alcohol-related harms, such as decreasing police contacts and decreasing MBA consumption, resulting in fewer hospital admissions, leading to improved self-perceived quality of life, housing stability, and safety. These benefits are life-changing for the participants and their families, with abundant anecdotes available in the literature outlining the improved lived experiences of participants in MAPS. So maps come in a variety of different formats uh, that mix and match services based on the community's needs and funding availability. The services provided are rooted in like basic tenants um, of providing managed alcohol, uh, housing when possible, primary health care services, social services, and cultural services when appropriate. Um, so uh, as you can see on the screen here, there's the housing first model, which provides housing along with wraparound services and the managed alcohol program. There's shelter-based where alcohol is provided from a shelter, but people have to sort of leave throughout the day, but can come back and get their dose of alcohol. 
there's community based where the alcohol is delivered to people wherever they are living at that time. Um, and usually that's one to four times a day. That's the one that um, is being done in northern Manitoba. The, the map that I was working with is a community based program. And then there's peer led. So there's participants brew their own alcohol. So it's usually like a you brew or a you wine and they distribute it amongst their peers. And the only one that I know of right now in Canada is in Vancouver. So general recommendations for any map um, is to limit non-drinking, non-program drinking whenever possible. A map should also provide wraparound health, mental health and traditional healing practices when appropriate. So each person should have their own tailored alcohol dispensing in which the participant does not receive more alcohol than they would normally drink um, in a day or week. And this should also be tapered in consultation with the participant as possible. Um, so like the guiding principles to do no harm. So you're not giving people more alcohol than they would be drinking sort of on their own in sort of a normal time period. Uh, there are normal, uh, sorry, a number of pharmacotherapies available for people living with alcohol use disorder, and these should be discussed with participants who are wishing to decrease their alcohol intake. So I performed a rapid review of Indigenous focused managed alcohol programs in Canada and shared my findings with the Northern Manitoba map. So this rapid review was set in an Indigenous context, and the research included in the review had to be um, maps that had Indigenous programming and served mainly Indigenous people. So since maps are so new and the available research is very limited, uh, the research on Indigenous-only maps was again limited from an already small pool of data available. So I chose a rapid review due to time constraints of the practicum placement and because of the like limited available literature. Um, I created a screening protocol and provided recommendations for practice for Indigenous focused maps, which will be discussed in a minute. So what did the research say about Indigenous um, focused maps or led is uh, what, oh sorry, on top of the regular map recommendations, Indigenous focused maps should include traditional ceremony, trauma-informed practice, have representative staff of Indigenous people and or people with lived addiction experience, be community-led, and there should be access to elders. So the results of the rapid review um, based on these like recommendations of programming um, is that expected outcomes of participation in a map for Indigenous peoples are increased self-reported satisfaction in housing, safety, and quality of life, improved social relationships, and increased psychological rating. Other possible outcomes are decreased police contact and time in custody, fewer hospital admissions, reduction in non-beverage alcohol consumption, and an improvement in many liver function tests. Indigenous focus maps should use a holistic approach to address systematic difficulties around housing and fair treatment of people living with severe alcohol use disorder, but also supporting participants' physical, mental, and spiritual health through access to primary health services, cultural activities, and access to elders. These findings support that participation in a map can ground a participant, stabilize alcohol use and harms, and allow for the possibility to reconnect with family. In succeeding in stabilization and reconnection, holistic maps that include housing and wraparound services, indigenous focused services, and have, oh, sorry, have the potential to break intergenerational cycles of disconnection and upheaval that have historically been prevalent in indigenous people's lives in the wake of colonization. This is just a quote that I sort of really connected with, with like the goal of a map. So there are really only two goals of the program, to lessen the load on the community services and to provide a better, better quality of life. That's it. And so if they still drink hand sanitizer, but their quality of life is better because now they can go to bed and sleep it off in a safe place, it's still progress. It's still better than what it was before. And what we're looking for is incremental success. In conclusion, maps have the potential to help a specific population of people who are living on the edge of society with severe alcohol use disorder are precariously hosed, and who other forms of treatment have not been successful. In the context of Indigenous health, cultural activities are shown as a critical feature to MAPS, along with housing and regularly scheduled beverage alcohol and access to other wraparound services. The biggest lesson I learned from the rapid review is that more research in both the Canadian and the Indigenous context is needed to determine a better picture of the harms and benefits of this type of programming.
just quickly, I'd like to acknowledge um, and offer my sincerest gratitude to the University of Victoria, the Public Health Agency of Canada, and the province of Manitoba for allowing me to learn and grow as a public health student and to support me in the work I've done in this placement. And I'd like to thank my UVic supervisor, Dr. Nigel Livingston, my fact supervisor, Stephanie Delasmira, and my Manitoba health supervisor, Dr. Carla Lopke, for their endless patience and teachings during this practicum period. I'm forever grateful. Thank you.